So life's principles are the winning strategies for surviving and thriving on this earth. If we existed in another planet in the universe, perhaps there'd be a whole different set of principles. So we're gonna to get to know what these Earth's operating conditions are so we can better understand why our systems and our designs need to fit within these conditions as well. Many of us learned about Earth's operating conditions when we were at primary school, for example, but the way we design our world seems to be totally disconnected from our understanding of how this Earth operates. We have sunlight, gravity, and water. Now the Earth is subject to these three and we're very much aware of that. Gravity is absolutely essential for us to design within us and we ignore it at our peril. Aircraft designers, people who design the built environment like buildings and bridges, totally understand the need to design within the context of gravity. Sunlight, well, we're starting to recognize how important it is for us to design our systems to run on this abundant renewable resource and to move away from fossil fuels. And then water. We absolutely get that it is essential for life, and yet the way that we treat it seems to indicate completely different. If an alien were to land on the planet today and watch the way we wash our cars, they would seem to think that cars were essential for life, whereas water, which we fill with toxic chemicals and let go to waste down the drain, would have no value at all. We need to start designing our systems to recognize these contexts and working within them. Because our Earth is also subject to limits and boundaries. If you were to look at the vast ocean behind me, you would think that it would be an abundant resource that would never end. But we're starting to recognize that even the ocean has its limits and boundaries. The accumulation of plastics and waste in our ocean, it is also subject to limits and boundaries. If you were to look at the Earth from out of space, you would see that this sphere is actually completely subject to limits and boundaries, and we cannot ignore these. As the Earth turns around the sun, it also generates a number of cyclic processes that repeat periodically. Things like day and night and seasons and even tides. And those periodic um, cyclic processes, most organisms adapt to the changes. So they all have different strategies at night, different strategies in winter. And similarly, we need to start to do that too. We tend to design built environment that's full speed ahead no matter what the season and not adjusting our water use depending on the availability of water. But as much as these cyclic processes repeat over and over again, we also have these unexpected changes, this dynamic non-equilibrium that we never really can design for. In fact, in nature, the only constant is change. And every organism is really, really able to adapt to this constant change. If you think about the organisms in the intertidal zone, for example, at any one time in the day, they might be subject to intense heat of the sun and dry periods when the tide is low. And when the tide is high, the equivalent of tsunamis affecting these little creatures. And they're able to adapt to this dramatic change in their conditions. And every organism and every ecosystem on the planet knows how to adapt to changing conditions. We tend to design systems thinking that they'll be in place forever. And we need to start really figuring out how to adapt our systems and adapt them quickly, especially as we're subject to climate change. So as we learn life's principles, it's important to recognize that each one of them evolved within this Earth's context and every one of those principles is a guide for how to design within them.